Right, welcome to this advanced tactica and showcase videos for us for the Drakari. Um, working on uh, the new units, pushing ahead to try and get them revamped and ready, just like we've seen the Admech. Uh, revamped them, restructured the army, painted some new units, uh, and so now doing the same with the Drakari. These have been shelved for a long time, too long, uh, so it'd be good to see them come back. And so uh, when an army's about to arrive, you usually see a string of tactica videos coming out as different units become available. And it's just to give you a, an in-depth look at the different units. Also a chance to zoom in and take a look at the models. Great for your own painting reference as well as you, if you want to go ahead and copy the colour scheme uh, that I've done uh, for this army. It's been influenced really by the, the front artwork here. And you see this uh, artwork here. You can see it's metallic and yet it's green and blue and so on. I wanted to replicate that uh, in the armour that I have here, so there's a raider painted up in that colour scheme. Uh, but in this episode, we're going to take a look at the Void Raven Bomber. There it is. It truly is a, a beautiful model. It's one of my favourites for the Drakari. It's incredible. It's a big flyer, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. So, uh, in this episode, we'll zoom in, take a look at the model. Well, I don't know, <laughs> can't really zoom in because <laughs> it's, it's big enough. Uh, but we'll Take a look at the model uh, and then we'll check out the rules as well, how best to use this thing uh, in the game. So uh, I've zoomed in a bit here. Great thing about this model, this cockpit that you can see through to the other side. Such a cool idea. And there's a guy in there uh, lining up targets. Just through there, that's fantastic. He's lining up the bomb, uh, which we'll cover here in the rules. And there's the pilot just there. And the second seat back, but uh, it's just much bigger than the Razor Wing, just by comparison. So you can see how much bigger it is. It's huge. Similar kind of design, uh, which is cool. I'm glad Games Workshop kept the designs similar. And I'll just show you the underside. Painted up. There's the Void Mine, just there. See the way it hangs down. Just showing you all the angles so you can copy. So this is uh, the base colour sprayed silver. And then multiple washes on top, blue and green. And then the edging picks out with the silver again. And it gives you that shimmering off-world kind of metallic look. There is a full painting tutorial here. I made it a few years ago, so you have to uh, go back in the painting tutorial playlist. But you'll find it for the Drakari. I'll show you how to paint the infantry. And then over on the Plus channel, I'll show you how to paint a Venom. So it's one of the vehicles. And I'll show you all the... Uh, details there, how to paint this armour, how to paint this pattern as well, uh, the chipping effect and so on, uh, all these engines and the copper as well, uh, that's all covered and I think for the Venom as well I'll show you how to do these cockpits as well and how to paint the edging and yet still keep the clear glass intact as well, so that's all covered there and that's on the Plus channel, uh, available uh, there already. And uh, transfers as well is also covered. But we'll zoom out now. We'll take a look at the rules now for the Void Raven Bomber. So I'll try and give all the hints and tips that I know of to help you with this unit. By all means, check out the comment section below to see what other Drakari players are saying. A lot of experienced Drakari players out there. And so uh, check out and see what they have to say, uh, how they use the Void Raven Bomber. And if you're watching this and you do have experience with the Drakari and you've had success, uh, then leave your own hints and tips as well. So here it is then, it's a flyer, power level 9. Uh, strength 6, toughness 6, it's not the toughest out there, it's... but for a flyer it's, it's alright, but toughness 6. Uh, so things like auto cannons and so on will be wounded on a 3 plus. Does have 12 wounds, Razor Wing Jet Fighter has 10, so it's a little bit more durable. Uh, only a 4 up save as well, so not as tough as sort of your space marine flyers and so on. So ideally, this isn't the kind of fly <laughs> part of the tactic for it is to fly over units, but it's not the kind of fly you want to fl fly over the top of the enemy lines because it will be gunned down quick enough. And the games I have played with these previously, going quite a way back, my Void Raven Bomb was picked out pretty quick. So one tactic immediately is to try and keep these things alive for as long as possible. So, uh, one tactic that I'm planning to use is 
Depends the way your army structure and so on. Screaming jets. Do you use a stratagem during deployment if you've not used the webway portal, so you, you can't use both. You can set up a Chikari vehicle from your army that can fly in the sky instead of placing it on the battlefield. It can descend at the end of any of the movement phases, set up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away from any models. If you use a stratagem on a transport, all units embarked inside uh, remains so when it's set up in the sky. So uh, you can do that with your flyer here, keep it off the board. It means you're going to get to come on and you get to offload that shooting. Instead of, you know, turn one, uh, you don't get to go first. Your opponent goes first and then picks out the Void Dragon Bomb and it comes crashing down and it's lost and its firepower is wasted. So that's one tactic I'm planning on using uh, with these. Add. So, uh, movement 60 by the way, between 20 and 60, so you've got to anticipate how you're going to move it and planning, sort of planning ahead. Uh, it's sort of like a pattern where you bank around each turn and just let off your firepower uh, is perhaps the way to go. Uh, so it's armed with two Void Lances. That's the configuration I go for. Range 36, uh, Assault 1, so it means you can advance, but you're moving so quick that's you're never going to need that. Strength uh, 9, so things like Land Raiders it's useful for, you want 3s to wound. AP-4, which is great, you're going to buy a part, you know, better than a last can. AP-4, it's going to ignore armour. And it's annoying when you've got the hit, got the wound, and then when it's an AP-3 weapon, the opponent rolls a 6. It's infuriating that happens. But now it's AP-4, uh, that really helps. And the damage is D6. So yes, it's random, but if you have enough of these kind of weapons on the table, you start doing multiple D6 damage, you're going to cut through the armour quite quick um, of various targets. So just two of them. Uh, this model may replace its two Void Lances with two Dark Scythes. So, I'll cover points as well. Uh, flyers. Yeah, the Void Raven Bomber. So, 155 points for that. Uh, the Dark Scythe is zero. Yep. Yeah. Dark Scythe, and then the Void Lance is zero as well. So it's either or. Uh, so there's no extra points to be paid for that. Uh, so, uh, the Dark Scythe, the range 24, but range isn't going to be an issue because uh, you move so quick. Assault D3, strength 8, minus 4, and D3 damage. So, still nasty enough against vehicles. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, and then, but still a, a bit more of an infantry kick to it there because you get getting multiple shots. You average of about four shots in total, between two and six shots on average. Uh, strength eight, you do lose a bit of strength. Still keep the minus four and it's D3 damage. So better, be good against Primaris type units, for example. Uh, so either of those two, I wouldn't say one's particularly better than the other. May even be tempted to say that the Dark Scythe is slightly better. So that one shot, it's multiple shots. You're averaging about five shots, I reckon. Four or five shots, better than two. So maybe the dark side edges it. Uh, this model will replace its two void lances to two vo uh, dark scythes. This model may take void raven missiles. So you do have to pay for those. And it's 10 points, whether it's worth it. Range 40, yeah, it's brilliant range. Uh, you choose which of the profiles you want to use. So you go for the Implosion Missile, which is Assault D3, Strength 6, minus 3 and 1 damage. Or you can go for the Shatterfield Missile, which is Assault D6, Strength 7, minus 1. And you can re roll foul wounds for that weapon as well. So the Shatterfield's better. Pretty good against uh, medium and heavy infantry. Yeah, not bad. But you've got the choice of which you want to go for. Uh, but I reckon the Shatterfield's that much bit better but that's just like a bonus um, so you've got crash and burn rules hard to hit it's minus one to hit comes with five plus invulnerable save uh, for night shield as well uh, and then airborne so it can only be charged by units that can fly it can only attack or be attacked by units that can fly supersonic so you can first pivot 90 degrees uh, it has the movement characteristic of uh, when it advances uh, increase the move by 20 inches, so a super quick potential 80 inch move 
which is crazy. And the void mine, this is the sting in the town for this unit. Uh, once per battle, Void Raven Bomber can drop a mine on an enemy unit it moves over in one of its movement phases. After the Void Raven Bomber has moved, pick one enemy unit that it flew over, then roll 3d6 for a vehicle or monster, so it's not really that effective against them. Uh, or 1d6 for each other model in the unit up to a maximum of 10. Then uh, for each roll of a 3 plus, the unit being bombed suffers a mortal wound. So the best target that would take on would be something like a 10 man tactical squad. It's horrible, it's uh, deadly. So you'd be looking at 10 dice, then threes, and you've killed six marines just by flying over the top of them. And that's sort of the average. Just killed eight marines in, and just watch the look on your opponent's face when you do it. Half a squad killed. That's the kind of damage you'd be looking at. Again, half a squad killed. But you're not going to miss with all of them. They're going to come through. There's seven killed just there. Come on, reroll if you really need to. Uh, but five, six, seven, eight kills. With that, and that's just a flying over the top. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant weapon. It's a fantastic weapon. So I, I think that's a, a nice addition there. And that void mine, with that kind of damage, is a weapon to be feared. And so it should be. So that's um, uh, it's a good move there. The Games Workshop have given it uh, nasty rules like that. You know, and you've got the choice there of the void mine. There may be a situation where you fly over the top of a lean Russ. It's got two wounds left, and you drop the void mine. And I failed that, but <laughs> and oh, one's gone off the table, and I knew that happened. I failed again. Let's say it's got one wound left. That okay? So two, <laughs> two more so wounds. I think it'd be very useful in that situation where you don't want to dedicate a load of firepower to this vehicle, um, so you can just cheekily drop the void mine, pick off the last few wounds, and, and then you're free to fire at something else. So it could be useful in that regard, just to pick off the last few wounds on a vehicle that's almost destroyed. Uh, but Mostly you want to go for a larger infantry unit and because it's mortal wounds, you know, invun saves uh, and no matter how heavy the armour is, it's not going to matter, the mortal wounds are going to go straight through and so that's your primary kind of target. I think 10, size 10, 10 man squad or thereabouts uh, would be the best kind of target for the void mine. But as I said earlier on, you've got to be careful you're not flying right over the cross uh, the top of the opponent's force because they'll just direct a ton of firepower and bring the void raven bomber down so something you'll be cautious about pick the timing and target at the right point pretty much free to mo move over stuff though with that 60 inch move be moving quick around the table uh, for that to happen so i'm in envisioning uh, screaming jets position at the back line uh, to improve its firepower, maybe go for the Archon nearby within six to grant three to hit rerolling once. Uh, and then turn the second turn after that, whenever it decides to arrive, then go for your Void Mine attack. So I think play it that way. Keep it off the board, depending on who you're playing against. But if there's a lot of firepower, perhaps Ashton Minotaur and Tau and so on, I would keep these off the table. Uh, drop them in, fire. And if they survive, go for the Void Mine attack uh, on the turn after that. I think that's the way I'm going to play. Uh, using these. So uh, that's pretty much the tactic for this. I, I would, I really would try and keep it uh, seven wounds or more. So hanging around the back line just to make the best of your ballistic skill. As soon as you get to six wounds or less, drop to four plus, then five plus, uh, and those void lances and the missiles and the dark sides, they start to become less effective. So I think the key is to try and keep it out of trouble. It's, it's not that great. But hanging around your back line, with five plus in one save, minus one to hit rolls, it might just put your opponent off. They might be firing at other ground targets, for example. Uh, and the key is to try and keep that, that it's ballistic skill for as long as possible. Then maybe when it's down to five wounds, two wounds, then send it out on its uh, void mine attack. That's sort of a last gesture. Maybe play it that way because that's not going to be affected by ballistic skill. Uh, if you've got one wound left, you're down to 25 inch move, but then you can always make an advanced move of 20. Yep, so you'll still get 45 inch move. So you'll still be able to do it, no problem. Uh, and it's not going to affect the void mine because you just have to move over the target in the movement phase. 
So yeah, that's maybe the way to play it then. Uh, screaming jets, bring it in, fire, keep out of trouble, keep the, pouring the firepower on, because I've got units I want to provide firepower support, uh, and then uh, as the unit gets in trouble, it's got a few wounds left, and you think, well, it's definitely going to die next turn, uh, then send it out on its uh, void mine attack. Yeah. And it's good to hang back, I think, because you might, during the game, you're sort of watching the game unfold, uh, the opponent's got a key unit somewhere that's a threat somewhat at some point during the game, and then you're able to sweep over the top uh, and then drop the void mine just to try and uh, soften that unit up. So, yeah, tactical use that way as well. But um, that's the tactica then for the Void Raven Bomber. I rate it. I think it's a fantastic looking model. Uh, it is quite big. It takes a while to paint, uh, but I think a, a useful unit for sure. But uh, not a unit to be thrown away. It's just worth trying to keep it alive for as long as possible. Check out the comment section below, see what others have, are saying about the Void Raven Bomber, and, and then uh, leave your own comments and feedback as well. And painting tutorial for the Drakari here on YouTube, uh, so follow that along, show you how to paint the infantry, and then over on the Plus channel there is uh, the in-depth painting tutorial for the Drakari as well. And then on both of the channels keep a look out for bad reports, hoping to get these featured in some games soon as well. But there it is, that's the video, thanks for watching, and tune in next time.